Hello everyone and welcome to Deep Sea Learning with Georgia Aquarium Education. You can check out our other videos on our YouTube channel. Today we're going to learn about marine mammals with Marine Mammal Madness. For you educators out there following along, we're going to be covering the next generation science standards today, MS, LS1, LS2, and LS4. Let's dive in. First of all, let's think about what is a mammal? A mammal is a kind of animal that has hair, warm blood, gives birth to live young, and feeds those young with milk. Examples of mammals are humans, elephants, bats, and marine mammals. Marine mammals are mammals that live in the ocean. Examples of marine mammals include cetaceans, which are whales, dolphins, and porpoises, panpeds, which are seals and sea lions, sirenians, which are dugongs and manatees, sea otters, and polar bears. Now, you might be surprised to hear that polar bears are actually considered to be marine mammals, but that's because they spend a significant portion of their life surviving off of ocean waters. The first marine mammal we're gonna talk about today are cetaceans. Cetaceans are whales, dolphins, and porpoises. There are two types of cetaceans. The first are the baleen whales. So baleen whales are named after the long skinny filter plates in their mouth called baleen. Baleen whales used to filter uh, use these baleen plates to filter small organisms like plankton out of the water for their food. They are filter feeders. Now, if you're wondering at home what this baleen feels like, you can take a wiry paintbrush or a stiff hairbrush and run your fingers along it. That feels an awful like the fibrous parts of this baleen. Now, the harder parts near the end here kind of feel like fingernails or toenails, and that's because this baleen plate is actually made from a substance called keratin, which is the same substance that's found in your fingernails and your hair. Neat. You might remember that I mentioned before that all mammals have hair. Well, whales have hair too. In fact, another name for baleen whales is the mustache whales, because these baleen filter plates feel a lot like a mustache. So baleen whales are some of the largest animals that have ever lived. They include the humpback whale and the blue whale, which is the largest animal alive. A blue whale can be longer than two school buses parked end to end and can weigh up to 200 tons. Its tongue alone can weigh a ton and its heart can weigh the size of a small automobile. The other type of cetacean are toothed whales, which are named obviously because they have teeth. This is the skull of a beluga whale, a type of toothed whale. And as you can see, it has teeth inside of its skull. The beluga, uh, the toothed whale diet is much different from the diet of a baleen whale. Toothed whales tend to eat animals that are larger. Uh, in fact, some animals like the killer whale when working together in a team can take down animals much larger than them, like the blue whale. This is the tooth of a killer whale. As you can see, it's pointed backwards. Uh, the reason why it's pointed backwards is because tooth whales don't chew their food. They have to grab it whole. Uh, they hold on to their prey, which is sometimes struggling, and they simply swallow it whole or tear it into smaller bites. So this is the tooth of a killer whale. Uh, some tooth whales can be very large. This is the tooth of a sperm whale, which is the largest of all the toothed whales. Um, and its favorite prey is the giant squid. And we're gonna talk a little bit uh, more about that in just a moment. So toothed whales are also very social. They use a series of clicks, squeals, groans, and other noises to communicate with one another. In fact, our belugas and our bottlenose dolphins here are very talkative. They also have hearing in a, free, in a very, very wide range of frequencies, including the frequency that the human voice uh, is at. So that means that when you come to Georgia Aquarium and you walk in front of our dolphin habitats, you can hear our dolphins and our dolphins can hear you. Another neat thing that toothed whales can do with sound is echolocation. Now echolocation is when a toothed whale sends out a sound like a loud click out into the water in front of it. It listens to the echo that this sound produces after it bounces off of an object and it's able to navigate its way even through very, very dark water simply by listening to the sound. Now let's do a quick demonstration that you all can follow along at home. We're gonna play the echolocation game. 
All right, so I'm a hungry sperm whale, and sperm whales can travel up to a mile down to the, to the very deepest parts of our ocean to find their favorite prey. Do you remember what it is? The giant squid. Now at the very bottom parts of the ocean, it's very, very dark, so sperm whales have to be able to use echolocation to find their prey. And here's how you play the echolocation game. So I'm the whale, I'm gonna close my eyes and pretend it's very dark, and I'm gonna send out a clap. Now, my prey, the giant squid, when the clap echoes off my prey, they're going to clap back, and hopefully I'll be able to find my giant squid without opening my eyes. Gotcha. <laughs> So try that at home with your friends and family. This concludes Marine Mammal Madness. For all my Georgia locals out there, we covered the Georgia Standards of Excellence S6E6, S7L4, S7L5, S8P4, and S8P5. I hope you enjoyed learning about marine mammals. Please turn tune in next time to Deep Sea Learning with Georgia Aquarium's Education Department.